How's it everybody? Welcome back to the Rocky Fern. My name is Luca and I have OI Type 4. And in today's episode of Show Me the Green, we're going to be doing a species profile and a repot on this beautiful guy. This is a Mammillaria plumosa, or also known as the feather cactus, and it's in bloom. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is that Mammillaria plumosa. I've had it for uh, actually quite a long time now, um, but it's starting to develop two new pups, and we can try to get a close up on those flowers because they are so beautiful. I love Mammillaria flowers. They usually have some striping on the petals, and they can be anywhere from pink, yellow, and white. Um, they are mostly pastel colors, but they're still really, really pretty. The nice thing about um, Mammillaria plumosa is the spines are actually quite soft. And these spines have developed um, to shade out the intense sun that they get in their native region, which is southern United States all the way to northern Mexico. A really beautiful, beautiful mammillaria that can actually get quite big. And the fact that it's pupping is so cool. I love, I love these pups. I'm not sure if you can see that on here. Let me see if I can get it. There you go. You can see these, these uh, pups one and two right here. So, yeah. And mammillaria will usually get a halo of flowers. Um, it's funny that even the pups are starting to flower and you can start to see that there's a couple new blossoms in there as well that are hiding underneath those plumose like spines. So very cool. But I definitely think once the cactus reaches the edge of the cactus, or the, rather the edge of the pot, it's due for a repot. So let's get into it. I'm gonna pour out the old stuff into this container. So I'm actually not gonna break it up too much. Um, because I think that's pretty good right there. So we are gonna go to a much bigger pot, but it's gonna be a much more porous uh, mixture. So I'm gonna put this right here and bring this guy over. This is the mix. It's, I would say, 70% um, sand, black onyx sand, stratum, pumice, lava rock, zeolite, and then it has 20% um, to 25% of the cocoa coir. It looks like it's more cocoa coir in this mix because of the black onyx sand, but it's, it's really like maybe a cup's worth of cocoa coir in this whole mix, and about five cups of uh, the other stuff. So. That's it, and then we'll make sure to put in some slow release fertilizer. There's also some charcoal in here, and uh, perlite. Yeah, so it's a, it's a quite rocky mixture, and it does freely break apart. It does not hold shape at all, so that's what you want. Let's put uh, in this big pot here, let's put in the little cover, and then we'll start to uh, dump in here. You always want to slap your plants <laughs> when you're repotting. And this is where I'm going to put in the slow release fertilizer. The only problem with Mammillaria, like Plumosa, is any dirt will get stuck in the Plumosa spines and it kind of ruins the aesthetic just for a little bit. And of course you don't want to water these too much to wash it out, so you kind of have to like get a paintbrush and smooth things out. Okay. I'm gonna shake it in here. Do a little pat pat. Now, I would normally would be pretty concerned with the succulent to up pot to something this size, but because it's a really porous mix, I believe and I'm hoping that will be just fine. Now, of course, I won't water this thing for about 10 days. Maybe even then I won't water just because she got a heavy drink a few days ago and uh, yeah, and I didn't disturb the roots too much. 
but when I do water it will be just a, a little bit of watering just um, for the first few months just enough to keep it going not enough to stress it out but uh, once those roots develop then I can get a much deeper watering uh, I'm going to use this black lava rock as a top dressing it has this this uh, seed right here this stupid little seed I hate saying it that way but this is a very invasive plant this is the African tulip tree I'll put a picture right here they're very ornate very pretty but um, they're very invasive in fact um, some of my family's property uh, when we first acquired it was hardly any African tulip trees and now it's 90% African tulip trees and it's it's and that's in a span of maybe 15 20 years so it's a very invasive tree it gives huge pods of these very wind carried light seeds and they strike anywhere they land they can strike on your roof they can start at the top of telephone poles they're almost as bad as chiflares are the uh, octopus tree or the umbrella tree however you want to however you know it as i thought the white feather like spines would set off really nice against the black lava rock so and I think I was right I really like that look so just do another little shake in here just really get it in there and then what I'll do is I'll just come through here and just try to comb out the dirt as, as it were if you can understand what I'm saying yeah, that is so cool. So I really like that look. Like all the Mammalara, their tubercles are sh shaped in the form of nipples, which is where I believe these uh, Mammalara get their name from, the genus name, um, is the tubercles form in these little protrusions. And then another reason I've been told that they're called Mammalara is because they do form breast-like uh, clumps or growth. So just, you know, food for thought. Be it as it may, but Plumosa is one of my favorites. There are quite a few of these fuzzy looking Mammalari, but this one is probably one of my favorite. And as far as touchable cactus, this is, you really can't beat this. I mean, you could touch this and pet it all you want and there's no sharpness to it. So uh, I have, do have a little bit of a bonus. While I was out there looking at my Mammalari to see which plant I was gonna do the video on today, I found this um, Selenocerius. This is Selenocerius urban, urbaniensis. And it doesn't necessarily need a repot, but because it's going out the bottom, I'm gonna repot it and kind of do it a, maybe a more horizontal fashion to get those roots to grow down into the pot. Um, this was a free cutting I got out of a package. It's a very cool Salinas Sirius uh, because it's, all, it's spineless. Um, you can't really, I don't see any spines. I don't see any glockids on this part. There do seem to be glockids on the new growth, so I'll be careful. Um, rubbing my fingers up and down the, the growth of the plant here, but let's stuff that out. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to cut this open. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. And this guy just got a drink today, so, but because I saw that growth coming out the bottom, I thought it's best to repot it. All right, let me get some scissors and I'll be right back. Okay, got some scissors here. We're gonna need to cut this guy out, so. Cut like that. And I think I'll have to cut here. Try to bring this up and around like that. There we go. Oh man, I'm gonna have to cut the uh, the little screen that I use because it grew through the screen and when I got this I thought I, I thought it read it correctly but I might have put it in upside down <laughs> starting to see that that's a root but I thought I could tell that the growth was this way because it came to me unrooted of course I don't think I would have made that mistake if it was rooted but let's take a look at this it's kind of interesting so you can see <laughs> uh, that I, I think I did put it in upside down. So the roots, the roots came from, came, well, it's rooted down here. You know what, I'm a little confused what's going on, but that's okay. 
won't be the first time, will it? All right, let's see if I can get in here and cut this away. I'm kind of glad I found this and or re realized it when I did because this poor guy was getting choked out. He was going through a pretty small screen. And I don't want to lose this root, so I'm going to cut that root out of there too. There we go. Look at that. I was able to save it. Ah, okay, so now we have a question of how we're going to repot this. Oh, how strange is that? That is so weird. I'm going to pot it in this fashion with the pot down here and having this stick out the top and maybe we'll leave just the tip of this new growth exposed so we'll just reuse this pot why not and um, I should do some more research here um, I'll post where Urban, um, Ur uh, you know, the Salinaceris urbaniensis is from. Um, urbanianus is really what I'm trying to say. Uh, because I'm not sure where they come from. So, obviously South America somewhere. Okay, let's do that. Shake, 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 shake. A little slow release fertilizer. Yeah, I really like Salinaceris. They're also known as Queen of the Night Cactus. They have these big, beautiful blooms. I have another uh, Peruvian apple cactus that has a blossom on it that I'm so stoked for. Um, I think I'm gonna do just a little bit more. And of course, this will all settle, but I because we're, we're dealing with a weird rooted plant, just set up here. It's kind of unique in how we're gonna handle this, but okay. All right, that's all, all worked in, and I do have enough of this top dressing here. We'll get this mixed in. This isn't as crucial because. It's a little proud, so it's going to fall off. But all these roots that are exposed, of course, will dry and die off. But the majority of the roots are, are actually buried. So this is the bonus repot, Salinaceris um, urbanianus. And that's a pretty cool looking plant. All right, so I think that Mammillaria is gonna be much happier in that up pot. It's got those two new pups on it. That's gonna be freaking awesome to see. Before I go, I wanted to show you this guy. This is my Anthurium pepolalaminum. And this is its newest leaf. It's starting to get really big. And I love the veination on that. I just had to show it off. This is its second newest leaf. Very cool. I love the sheen on this. This is being kept out in ambient um, humidity and temperature. It does get really hot in the house, especially during the summer. So it gets about 93 in the house um, and about 50% humidity, although we are heading into our rainy season. And so it could jump up as high as 100% humidity, but on average it's going to be about 70 to 75% humidity. And the temps are going to drop to about 85 during the day, 80 possibly 80 during the day, um, and as low as 60 at night, 55 sometimes if it's really cold, which we rarely get, but I always look forward to. Um, but if you're interested in seeing more of these videos where I talk about my plant collection here in beautiful Hawaii, I post every Mondays and Friday. And if you could, support the channel by giving a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next adventure.